PR ceases operations on this frequency. We invite you to tune your shortwave radios to 3.215 megahertz. 3.215. That's 3.215 megahertz. We will begin operations on 3.215 megahertz in a few moments. WWCR now begins operations on 3.215 MHz. Our mailing address is WWCR 1300 WWCR Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee 37218, USA. WWCR now begins operations on 3.215 MHz. Our mailing address is WWCR 1300 WWCR Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee 37218, USA. Three seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Classic Redneck Radio, Baruch Bahashem, Yawashu. And life's feeling like it's uh, gonna be a wipeout Then grab your helmet and fasten your seatbelt Don't forget your fire suit Cause we're going home to mama Do you know what I mean? Happy, happy Get your pickup truck and your party too. Bring out the farm tractor, cause we're gonna be plowing true. Yeah, that is written radio. That is written radio. That is Uh, there's that sweet word again, ladies and gentlemen. Classic Redneck Radio. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, another live broadcast of Classic Redneck Radio. And had a wonderful, super blessed, lovely day. And uh, I'm being immensely, immensely grown and immensely blessed by Yawashua. It's so amazing. Uh, it'd be nice to have like, I don't know, hmm, four or five hundred thousand of you around me so you can see how it works and how it happens and, you know, sort of be right up there close and personal. But unfortunately, you all have responsibilities and you're busy building your houses and buying your land and cutting your lawn and all that lovely stuff. Redneck Nana Sam, uh, uh, have you been busy today? <laughs> yeah, just a little, just a little. A little. It's been about my father's business, actually. Today you're about your father's business. Very yes. good. All right. Can you swear to that? I, I believe I can swear to that. All right. Watch, because I'm setting you up, and I'm doing this for the sake of the audience. So you're being a, you're being a WWCR sacrifice right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. You're as long gonna, as we can all learn. Are you gonna? Yeah. That's the that's the spirit. Love your neighbor as yourself. Because you got to bear your own tree, right? That there it is. Mean. Yep. Uh, let's see. I could. Uh, I certainly can say that. Um, um, I'm having to make an adjustment here, ladies and gentlemen. I just discovered something is going on with the. Um, there we go. All right, the system is running. It's working. 
Very good. <clears throat> Had a little warning thing that came up, ladies and gentlemen. Just like the check engine light on your dashboard. You know, it came up and I'm going, hmm, that's interesting. My tires are pumped up. <laughs> I have gas in the tank, right? The temperature's fine. The oil pressure's fine. So it was what we call a uh, a dummy light. It, it's, I'm referring to it as the light. It's a warning that came up. I'm going, what is that? Nobody's supposed to be in that unit, you know? So resolved moment, though. So, Sam, you were busy, and you say you could potentially swear that you're doing your father's business. And... Uh, um, I will say opposite of that. I will say today I enjoyed his continuing everlasting mercy. So I can swear to that, that I received his pity today. And man, what a wonderful day it was, Sam. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Overcoming things and being successful and seeing, you know, this secret depression recession that monetary aspect I'm speaking about economic the secret depression going on recession you're not gonna be able to sell your houses I mean it's gonna be bad and uh, they're covering it up because you know sheep will get pissed off if you're not feeding the prisoners the proper uh, macaroni and cheese you know you're not giving them their cigarettes you know so what happens when the economy is not really working well if if you can be distracted with the David Copperfield type of the magician's tricks if you will you're less likely to get pissed off as a huge group Sam so they're delaying they're distract distracting you and then you know and then it's going to come to the point where the prison has a lockdown and you're not going to be able to move and that's where you're headed right now so I'm, I'm advising everyone you know if you have an opportunity sell your house now uh, but you can't just sell it and have no plan you have to have a plan and uh, you have to consider the cost of the plan and so on and so forth and um, so, and if you have enough money in the bank and you can turn it to gold and silver, freeze-dried food, proper supplements and things like that, um, you should do it so you can keep yourself healthy without going to a doctor or to a hospital. So, all these things need to be worked out. And even if it didn't happen and you prepared, uh, you're just wiser than the average worldly person, Sam. So... Uh, it took uh, how many years for Noah, Noah and his family to uh, prepare Sam? Well, I, was it like 100 or was it 40? I'm not quite sure I remember. Well, the angels helped him as they help us. But um, it's purported, reported to be 40 years. It takes 40 years to get ready. 40 years. And uh, <clears throat> if you didn't prepare for 40 years and you're out uh, doing your shtick in the world, following after foolishness, the wisest thing you could do, Sam, is what? Stay away from someone who knows how to prepare? <laughs> no. would, that be in, would that be really intelligent? Just avoid every day, every month, away from, from the wisdom? Would that be I wise? I think that would be what uh, you say the Bible has uh, uh, sottish. Stupid. Sottish. Stupid. And he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You can't get it quick enough. You can't get it now. You have to get what, what you lost. You have to redeem the time. You have to get what you lost yesterday. So if you're not moving fast enough, your fault. You're the fool. Virgin, foolish. Foolish, virgin. And... Uh, and that's it. And it's going to come a time where you need to rub shoulders with someone who knows, and it's too late because there's no more time. Redeem the time. So he's telling you, you know, you know, uh, get your horse going, so to speak. You know, get your stirrups and kick him in the side. Say, giddy up, let's go. And that's the only way you're going to pull this off. Otherwise, you end up as being the the lukewarm Laodicean, just sitting there doing nothing, saying, "I'm doing, I'm doing my stuff," you know. And a lot of you think I'm doing what the, I'm doing what God wants me to do, you know, and you're not even close. Not even close. Many, many people, ladies and gentlemen, learn a little bit about the Bible and then they think they're going to go out and save souls. 
So they look at every situation. They meet somebody at the gas station while they're filling their tank, and and why that was a that was a straight from God, you know, and it's not even close. It's the Christian feel good. Got to save souls, no, and so he's gonna bullshit you while you're pretending to do the work of the Lord, you know. And so that's what Christianity is, what Jehovah's Witnesses are. It's a, you know, Seventh Day Adventist, all bullshipping, bullshipping. A form of, it's, remember this phrase, it's very important. It's what Eliyahu says, a form of godliness, denying the power. Now you think, well, it's got to be the power of God, because I met this guy at the gas station, the quick field. And I was pumping, and he pulled in. Just when I, we, we was talking about this and that, and I got his number, and he got my number. And it's like, yeah, that's an act of God, all right? Yeah. And the fabric that you have to look at is not going to be according to the wisdom of man. It doesn't even, like, calculate, Sam. It doesn't look like it's going to add up, you know? And it does in the end. And so I want to encourage everyone to, to do good. You know, so, you know, help the guy in the street, the Good Samaritan, all that. Um, be very, very careful saying that you're about your father's business because this occurred or that occurred. Be really careful because you can give credit for, for every good thing comes from him. Well, that's true. Every good thing comes from him. But many times you can be dealing with someone who has a demon in them and they know you are in a sottish, stupid, ignorant position and you really don't know what you're doing. And they know it. And so they'll play with you, letting you think you're doing good stuff in the meantime something totally different going on Sam anyway no one likes to have correction Sam they don't want to have correction the wounds of a friend they don't want the correction they want tell me tell me I'm doing really well tell me I'm doing good I stopped by the the quick feel and I seen this here there and this and that and I had a flat tire and this guy came I, sh I swear he's an angel you know all this crap happens and you have to be very, very careful. Yes, there are angels. And yes, you will entertain them unaware of it. But you better be really, really careful. Now, why am I saying that? Here's why. Because the devil knows right now his time is short. And you have to be transitioning from the foolish virgin to the wise virgin. The wise virgins. Right? What did the foolish do different... What did the foolish do different from the wise, Sam? What did they do? Now there they was didn't a, have a, They didn't have any oil in their lamps. No oil, but they were a collective group, weren't they? Hmm. The, uh, the, the five wise virgins. It's a collective group, okay? 50%. Five wise. Yes, 50% of a whole, right? Of 10, yes. right? Yes. 50%. Could be, could be 500,000 people foolish, 500,000 wise. And so the, the if you went to the foolish virgin, Sam, and he said to them, so what would you do today, Sam? Right? What would you do? Mm -hmm. One was named Sam, right? They say, well, I was about my father's business. I was highly favored and uh, full of grace and mercy. And, 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 uh, and uh, I just love the blood of the Lamb. Excuse me? What did you do today? What did you do today? Did you use the authority? Did you use it? Or were you just stepping in the grace, as everybody else is doing? Stepping in the grace. Is that all you do, is just walk in the grace? Or are you a king or a queen? And are you a Levitical priesthood? Are you, are you dispensing with authority to guard for the souls of men and to guard for the saints? Do you really have on all the armor? You see? Now, Sam, if you were a foolish virgin and they're a collective group, okay? And you had a chance to be with the five wise virgins. Every minute of every day so you could capture all the information. Would that be something wise to do quickly or procrastinate about it? It would be something that you'd want to do almost immediately. Immediately. Like, like immediately. Yeah. And he said, he said, no man's worthy for the kingdom. He says, no man's left what? House, 
farms, has lands, or lands. And children. I mean, you can't love your daughter, your father, your husband, your wife. Anything you you love, no no one. You, everything is Yahweh. Right. So you love him first, and he gives you the supernatural knowledge, wisdom, counsel, power, love, all from the fear. He gives you all of this so that you know how to love your wife, you know how to love your children, you know how to love your neighbor, you know how to love your friends. And without having that knowledge of Yahweh, we'll call it 101, which is the fear of Yahweh. You know, without having one class 101, you're never going to get to be a graduate. Problem is, they never go to class 101 in Christianity. They go to, just say Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son. He was sent to save us and He bore all our sins from, from Calvary. And He shed His blood for you and me. Three days, three nights in the heart of the earth. Was resurrected and He's coming back in the glory of the Father. Praise Jesus. That's it. That's what you get. That's it. Where is the power, Sam? Where's the quick decision? Where's the, where's the, I'm going to give it all up to follow the wise virgins. I'm going to give everything up to follow the wise virgins. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it really? And you'll find, you'll find that you might go through, as Solomon did, a thousand, and he couldn't find one, Sam. Go through a thousand, and he couldn't find one. So you're going to go through, in the end of days, you think Solomon had it tough. <laughs> oh, man. The way things are so corrupt now is it's never been before in all of history. America is the um, cup of fornication in, in the hand of every nation on the planet, drinking from it. Right now, you'd be, you would have to go through, I would say, 10 million women, 10 million men to find one good one now. That's the odds right now. This is really bad. Not, this isn't my first rodeo, ladies and gentlemen. I've been doing this for a long, long, long time. I like to say lifetimes. And man, um, it's, it is what it is. I can tell you this, that when you have the Ruach HaKadosh, the set-apart breath of truth, you have the power that emanates from you, uh, the demons know who you are. And they are, uh, they are afraid, and they are, they are in subjection. You can command them, and uh, and you can um, uh, use your authority and do some awesome things. And even the demons will um, tremble and worship at your feet. Them, even the demons will be in subjection, and that's what you want. That's what you want, and uh, you know when you're you're face to face with a murderer, you know, or a rapist, or a lying lawyer, or a lying judge, or uh, a lying banker, or a lying policeman. Somebody's got guns point, you know, guns are pointed at you, multiple guns. Uh, they know who you are, and that and, and when they and when they start to assimilate and figure it out, then it's. That is, they totally uh, they what they do what the Bible says. Those that fear Yahweh will be at peace, shalom with all your enemies, Sam. All your enemies. So what we have now going on, I, mean, I advise you all since the eclipse, I said, the sign of Jonah is to face towards the name of Yahweh and and praise his name and thank him. The second thing is, that's the, re, that's the sign of Jonah. How did he get spit out of hell, out of the whale? How did he get spit out of there? He faced towards the name of Yahweh, the temple, and began to praise Yahweh. And so I also said what happened in the story of Jonah, he was on a ship, and that's the citizenship of America and the world. And when he was on the citizen, as a citizenship in the ship, uh, there were all kinds of nationalities there, and they had their gods. And when the, when, uh, the times got tough, and that's where you're headed right now, um, they were told to jettison their extra cargo. Because the seas were rough, and you're in the Holy See, you're in Admiralty Maritime Law. Uh, the whole system is is demonic and and evil, and so they you have to jettison uh, when you're you're a citizen of the U.S. corporation. Now's when you want to jettison cargo, 
so you make it safely home, okay? And uh, of course, uh, the captain of the ship realizes America's going down, and I'm using this, it, it's true, this is all true. He realizes it's going down, and he wants to know, how the hell is it collapsing? How come we have so many earthquakes? How come we have this? How come we have the plagues? How come we have all this stuff happening? Why? 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 Is somebody in America, is somebody in America responsible for all this? Right? Someone responsible? And he goes to uh, Yonah and he says, is it you? And he says, yeah, I, and Yonah's answer is the everlasting good news. I fear Yahweh and this is happening because of me. You see, Billy Redneck can pronounce judgment because I hear it from on high. When I pronounce judgment, as America begins to fold up like a house of cards, they're going to want to know, who, who, who's doing this? Who's making all this stuff happen? Right? And then you tell them, it's because I preach the fear of Yahweh, Sam. Pretty, pretty interesting, huh, Sam? It's, uh, it's phenomenal. And the coolest part is that when they throw you out of the U.S. corporation, it's the best piece of news you ever heard. I mean... <laughs> Get out of here, my people. So, you know, they throw you out. They evict you. Like, Get out of here. You know, what do they do with the Egyptians? What did the king, Pharaoh means king in Egyptian Mithraim. Uh, the king said, Get them the hell out of here, right? Everybody's dying over here, right? And so, uh, and so they, they, they eject them, right? And they, uh, you know, and, and he... We see they go across frozen land, you know, and the and the tsunamis came, and you know the Reed Sea is parted, and the and the the floor of the sea is frozen. It wasn't muddy because it was frozen, and the walls, uh, the walls of water were held up by wind, the, the breath of Yahweh, Sam, and uh, and so we you know we get across, and then the king of Mitzrayim, Egypt, he tries to make it across, and of course. Uh, here it comes. They they drown, right? So, Admiralty Maritime Law, U.S. Corporation, uh, state corporations, all of them, all of them, every one of them. Um, they're gonna. This is gonna get so bad. They're gonna say, "Who's doing all this stuff?" Right? And uh, uh, we could tell them that's probably uh, it could be the power of, say, a preacher in uh, South Carolina or something. You know, we could just pick a state and say, "Go see him. He's in a Martin Building. He's got his picture on the website." You could do that, and you know that that would be uh, that would be well. We would use the tools they use against the sheep. I'm here to guard for the souls of men. We'll give them. Uh, you know, we'll give them the direction to go in. Right over there. Right over there. Right there. That's the one. Right there. And, uh, and you know, they take one look and say, Nope, no Holy Spirit there. Right? But in the meantime, we escape. Right? And, uh, so many interesting things are going on. It is just amazing what's going on with the Federal Reserve and the money system, and uh, the, you know all the, all the crap that's going on in the Pentagon. And uh, now I don't know if it's true, but somebody who's part of the Pentagon owns the media, Sam. So nothing surprises. Yeah, me. it's just worse. I'm telling you right now, uh, there's something. Now, if you're if you're Keeping the commandments, you'll be happy as the man who feareth Yahweh always. Uh, Yahweh makes his companions of those who fear him. The angels of Yahweh encamp about those that fear him. You have to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Make it your habitation. That is the fear of Yahweh, which is Psalm 25, 14. The secret of Yahweh is with, with them that fear him, and he makes his covenant known unto them. So, um, you know, you have to understand that uh, uh, America right now is in deep, deep trouble. It's huge, Sam. Huge. And and there's a distraction going on on purpose by the money people. Um, and they're orchestrating, they're pulling the the strings, if you will, and the and the puppet of life and they're and they're making it seem like all is well in America from a sea to shining sea, you know. When in fact uh, it's real, 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 real bad. 
and uh, I see houses that are not moving at all, Sam. Yes. They're not moving. Now, if you have a house on Park Place or Boardwalk, obviously, you know what I'm saying, uh, you're still going to hold some value. But uh, some of you who have homes that are uh, not in the perfect place and so on and so forth, you want to really take a hard look at your position, your finances. Uh, can you sell? Do you want to sell? Where would you go? And what would you do if you did go? Are you hanging with... Are you? Are you... Are you... Are you close to a wise virgin? Hmm? Who knows? Are you close to a patriot armchair survivalist who's going to tell you to you know to do this, this, and this, and get a yurt and dig underground and and get some freeze dried food and um, and and five thousand rounds of ammunition and big ass guns? Is that is that who your wisdom is? That would, would that be wisdom, Sam? Would that be um, wisdom? We're not fighting flesh and blood, brother Billy. Nope, our weapons are not carnal. And then you get these, you know, these these Baptist preachers with the the big shiny 357 on the right side, shiny because they like to look at themselves, making sure there's no blemishes, because we're not going to make it if there's a spot or a blemish, Sam. So they're looking for blemishes. They take the gut out, they look and say, hmm, what do you think, Laura Lee? How do I look? He's talking to his gun. He named his gun Laura Lee, right? Oh, my. So you get these Baptist preachers, and they think the answer to this is the Black Robe Regiment, Sam. Mm. The Black Robe Regiment. Excuse me? Everybody in the end of days is supposed to have black sackcloth on. And you're supposed to have power to bring fire down from heaven. That's what you're supposed to do. And you're supposed to be able to sing the song of Moshe and the song of the Lamb. So, you know, they can't do it, so they got to go to the weak side of things, you know. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So the rod, right? That is the pistol. You know how they used to say it, you know, the gangsters would say, Hey, he's, he's got a rod under his jacket, you know? And then they, the, the staff would be the long gun, right? So you get these Baptist preachers who love the guns, right? Thy rod and thy staff would comfort me. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, no, I like the comforter where he says, Okay, say this now. And then the mountains start melting. Woo! I like that. I like the comforter when he says, okay, I'm going to take him out. Now say these words. Tell him you love him. And they drop dead. <laughs> I love the comforter, Sam. I love the comforter. You know, uh, uh, you know uh, the, the husband and the wife, you know, they come the, to the foot of Simon Kepha, you know, and they, we've brought you all the sale, all the money from the sale of our house. We brought every single penny. And he says, why dost thou, why do you lie to the Ruhakadosh? Guy drops dead. Wife comes a couple hours later after they bury him. Same bullshipping line, right? And so... Your nation, this is, this is one of the giveaways, Sam, in prophecy. There'll be, let's pull back this uh, bottom of the hour intro stuff. Uh, they'll be building and marrying and gets homosexual, sodomite, transgender marriage. They'll be building and, you know, marrying animals and robots and so they're going to be, uh, I, I just heard it just now. Some sons of bitch, somewhere down the line, some cucamongo, something, I don't, I don't even know what cucamongo is, but somebody's going to want to marry their cell phone. It's going to be in the news. It's coming down the road. Uh, somebody's going to want to marry their cell oh phone, my, Sam. That's so sad. Somebody's going to be marrying their cell phone. And I'm hearing, even... I'm hearing that it's going to be, thank you, Yahweh, it's going to be some kind of a... Uh, somebody's going to set up some kind of a little corporation website thingy, and it's kind of, um, what do you call it, where it's not a real marriage, but it's um, uh, a simulation? Yeah, where you, can, where you can marry your cell phone, and you can divorce it. You can divorce yourself, you can marry it, you can divorce your cell phone, and you get a certificate that you're married to your cell phone. It's gonna, oh, oh, I'm seeing more. It's going to be like biometrics in there, too. They're going to take your biometrics. And it's going to authorize that you're married to that particular iPhone with that serial number, and that's it. And when you get rid of it, you got to get a divorce. Yep. And of course, you gotta, you're going to have to pay a little bit of money. 
You have to pay for the divorce, but then your cell phone, you can give your cell phone, you can give yourself to another. You can give your cell phone to another, and then they have to, you know, court it for a little while. They'll be courting it, courtship, and then they're, then they're going to, they can, you know, be engaged, and then they're going to marry. Uh, they're gonna, I'm not playing around here, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody's going to want to marry their cell phones in the future. Somebody's going to want to marry cell phones, their own cell phone. Uh, they're worshiping it. Worshiping means obey it. They're bowing down, worshiping it. Texting is in the right and the left hand. The mark of the beast is the right hand. That's the... Uh that's the uh, definition in Hebrew of all of the power of man to buy, to sell, to do work. Right hand, you know, Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. So the mark in the right hand means the ability for any, even if you're left-handed, for the ability of any man, woman, or child to do things like buying and selling and other powerful things. But it also says in the Bible the mark's going to be in both the right and the left hand, and that's texting. And the mark in the forehead is when you sign your signature. And that, that means you agree with all of your being, the X. In the 22nd letter in, in Christ, uh, Aramaic, uh, Paleo-Hebrew, the last 22nd letter is an X. And that's why Hasatan, the devil, Lucifer, wanted you to sign on the X, because it means you agree with all of yourselves. All of your being, all of your strength, all of your eternal life, you give away with your signature. That's why your name should only be in the book of life. You should never sign your name unless you're making a declaration, and then you sign a declaration. You do not sign a contract with man with your signature. Don't do it. If you do, call me up. I'll tell you how to sign it. Okay? All right. You want to hang around with the, you want to hang around with the five wise virgins, Sam? Is that true, Sam? Would you want to hang around with the five wise virgins? Or would you, <laughs> yeah, it'd be fantastic. Or would you want to be independent and do your own thing? Uh, forget that. I know. What if you were debt free? What if you were debt free in good health and you had a check coming in every month? Didn't have to worry about a damn thing. Would you avoid? You still wouldn't want to be on. You, no, no, no. You got to be around. The wise man, woman, yes. The vir wise virgins, yes. If you want to learn how to make a beautiful, elegant table for your dining room, you want to learn from someone who knows how to make them, right? So you go and you hang around and you learn and you befriend and you and then you have that information and then you can you go further. So we're, to, we're commanded to grow in the knowledge of, of our Creator. That's what Christ told us, told us to do, was to grow in the knowledge of, of Yahweh. He, the term in, in the Bible is false. God is a uh, an ancient Teutonic title of any supreme being. And we know that the word God and Lord in the Bible, it tells you in King James, actually had the four Paleo-Hebrew letters, which is pronounced Yahweh and not Yahweh, which is gnashing of the teeth, weeping, wailing and gnashing of teeth in the pronunciation of Yahweh. So if you keep saying Yahweh, <clears throat> I have very little respect for you. Very, very little respect for anyone who says Yahweh. Uh, I hear the preachers claim to be the last minute prophet of God. You know, and he's like, I'm on Yahweh in the name of Jesus. And I'm going, dude, you don't have any authority. You don't even know what's right. But they follow you like they follow the other 36,500 demonations, denominations of Christianity. You know, they, they, don't, they don't know they're sheeple. Every day going to slaughter. They're, those are the tares being brought to you to, for the burning, you know. But you can't tell them nothing. They, they're too ashamed. They're too shy. Uh, they're too afraid of being found out. By calling me at 856-776-1176. I ask all you preachers, your evangelists, whatever, apostles, whatever you call yourself, just give me a call. Uh, let us come and reason together. I'll keep everything confidential, and I will teach you the fear of the Almighty. And when we're done, your life will change. You're going to have to go back to your followers on the website, and you're going to have to tell them how you've been doing stuff wrong. And then you're going to have to turn around and start doing it right. Yes, I mean. And once you do it right, you might lose a couple, but actually, history shows you will be mightily blessed beyond any point that you are now. It's really very, very simple. Matthew 10 says to shout the everlasting good news, the gospel. Uh, uh, here's another lie, Sam. The God spell. The gospel is God spell. So God puts spells on you, Sam. The God spell. Actually, the correct definition is glad tidings or good news. 
So there it is. You have to have the glad tidings of good news. What is the everlasting good news? Revelation 14, 6. The fear of Yahweh is clean. The fear of Yahweh is an everlasting covenant. The fear of Yahweh will get you through. It's the salt covenant. And if they're not preaching it from their own lips constantly with hundreds of fear of the Lord scriptures in the Bible, fear of Yahweh scriptures, they are liars. They do not have a relationship with Christ. He doesn't know them, Sam. Because if they're not preaching what Christ said to shout from the rooftops in Matthew 10, they're full of bullshit. And they're just and then and then you can really find them if they have a nonprofit 501c3 corporation and they're calling themselves the last minute prophet of God. Right? Uh uh. Nope. Nope. You're not in the B system, dude. You're set apart. Live it on a mountain. Uh, 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 they don't live on a mountain. They live on a on a farm in a pasture, right? They live on a farm. Yeah, there it is. They live on a farm, Sam. Mm -hmm. A man of Yahweh has to be set apart, and he has to live on a mountain. And if they could clearly see that the everlasting good news is the fear of Yahweh and that men have shut up the key of knowledge and the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge men have shut up the key of knowledge the word beginning there infers a key and uh, they teach the fear of the Lord by the precepts of men so there it is mm -hmm. I've, heard, I've heard some of these guys who claim to be the last minute prophet of God play what we call the Alexander Scorby because he did some wonderful Alexander Scorby did some great narration of the Bible and what they do is they play, you know, um, Alexander Scorby's voice from Revelation 14, 6. They play it over the air, and that's supposed to be their, you know, that's all they do. Boom, done. That's not it. Uh, I, I believe these people are, are false. False prophets. Because if you have the Ruach HaKadosh, you can't stop preaching the fear of Yahweh. And that's why he said in Malachi 3, 16, he points to his wise virgins and he says here are these he points to us right now here are these that spake often one to another about the fear of Yahweh and he hearkens unto them he listens only to them and he caused the book of remembrance to be written for all those who fear him and the book of remembrance is two copies of the Torah and they thought upon his name which means the pronunciation of his name and they're my jewels he says in Malachi 3 16 17 18 19 so on they're my jewels, my gemstones, my lively stones, whom I will spare as a father spares a son who obeys him. And when you return from growing up in the fear of Yahweh, the salt covenant, you will know who is a prophet of God and who's a prophet of Yahweh Shua. It's real simple. Otherwise, you are one of the Christian denominations, denominations, Sam, just like the phony money was a cotton fabric. The picture of man on it is called Unrighteous Mammon, and it's connected to your birth certificate bond trust. The serial numbers are connected, and uh, and they have a non-profit corporation, so they can do collect your money, and you don't have any taxes. And so you can see that there's falsity there, Sam. Amen. It's false. Amen. False, false, false. So, when they say Christ is with them, come on down to the Feast of Tabernacles, come on down to the Passover, come on down to the farm, you know... Your reaction to go there is strictly carnal. It has nothing to do with spirit driving you there. It's you having a form of godliness denying the power. Then what do you do? Then you get to the farm and what do you hear? Turkey talking Pentecostal. Oh, that's supposed to be proof. Oh, I'm, I'm greatly moved. Right? Greatly moved. God's got to talk publicly and talk. And then somebody's got to stand next to you and interpret the secret that God just gave you from your mouth. And, you, and then you got to interpret it to the audience. It's always just been about interpreting language. So if you're German and all you can do is speak German, somebody's got to speak English. That's what it means. Tongues, languages. It's not... Because the, the tongues of angels, I haven't heard anybody know, who knows how to do it on earth. I know how to do it, and I'm not telling you the secret. But it's not that. It's not what Pentecostals do. That's not it. And they don't give a damn. That's the worst part. 
They're not even smart enough to say, I think this guy's a damn demon. That's Bella Redneck. Gotta be evil. Gotta be him who cast fire down from heaven. He accuses the weather. I, I ain't afraid of that son of a bitch. I got Jesus Christ with me. I'm gonna call him up at 856-776-1176. I'm gonna call him up and see what for, okay? You don't even have the kahuna hairs to do that. Now, some of you half-ass drunkards do. I've had, you ain't my first rodeo, and a lot of you guys are like, well, you're not really breathing anymore. So, if the preachers would call me, I am duly authorized to keep things in confidence and secret, and, and come and let us reason together, I will teach you the fear of the Almighty, and you will be a kick-ass preacher! Not the last minute prophet of God! Yahweh! Gnash your teeth, boy! You're gonna be casting out of darkness, weeping around it, you'll be bound hand and foot. You never kept the law and the calendar of Yahweh! It sure the hell ain't the calendar of Julius Caesar! Pope Gregory! Even the Jews don't have the right time, and it says they are responsible for the oracles. Oracles is what, Sam? Those are the words. Oracles. Oh. Is that a calendar, Sam? No. And even the oracles, the Jews have them wrong. They name the months like the sun god Tumaz, the lowercase t, Tumaz sun god worship. The 12 months are named after the 12 tribes of Israel, thus the zodiac, duh, the lion of Leo, the lion of Yehudah, duh. You got Sagittarius, Leo, Virgo, Libra. Go study all this stuff. When you put the right name on them, suddenly the perspective done been changed. That's why he says uh, the tree of life has 12 manner of fruit. 12 months. And it says it bears it 12 different characters of the 12 sons of Jacob Israel, four mothers, four different hair colors in the mothers, four different eye colors, one father, Jacob Israel. You are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So the 12 months, he says, the tree of life bears uh, its fruit in its month. It bears all manner of fruit, its manner of fruit in its month. That's why when you keep the calendar of Yahweh, you're, you're aligned with the sun and moon and the stars. And you keep his Sabbaths according to the sun, moon, and the stars. And what happens is, he says the stars in the Bible, he says, speak to you every night. She, wisdom, is a she. It's wa. Wa means her, she. Uh, wisdom, nothing's being compared to her. Wisdom. But the stars utter her speech every night. The stars. They speak to us. But when you're out there in the world keeping the Julius Caesar calendar doing what you think is right because some damn preacher told you to do it, you aren't even in line with the transmission coming from heaven. You're way the hell out there somewhere else, somewhere out in worldly land. You got to be, well, let's say you have, a, you have somebody you're in love with, right? What do you do when you're in love with somebody? In the fleshly sense. You can't stop thinking about them. So I love Yahweh, I can't stop thinking about Yahweh. What do you do? You wait by the phone for the call from your lover. He said, if you love me, keep my Torah. If you say you love me, keep not my Old Testament commandments, the truth is not in you, and you're a liar, sir. You wait by the phone for your lover to call. Even if it's all day and all night. But what does the lover say? These are my appointed times. These are my bridegroom chambers. These are the dark of the moons. I will come into you on the dark of the moon, the beginning of every month. There's 12 months, 12 tribes of Israel. That's why when he, uh, they bear their fruit, all the, the matter of fruit in their month. They bear the fruit in their month. 12 matter fruit and they bear in their month. He's coming back with a new city called Yahweh Salem, otherwise known as Yahweh Shema. And there's 12 round pearl holes like a full moon. Twelve, three on each side, four walls, high walls, and they're, they're round like a full moon, and over the top of each of those holes, like a full moon, is one of the Hebrew names of the month. Twelve tribes of Israel. Oh man, you've been bullshipped. And uh, 
So, you're keeping Satan's calendar. I don't care who the hell you are. I will face you nose to nose because let me tell you something. The book of Daniel says the devil came. He's the one. He's the he's a father of lies. He did it all. He's the author of these lies. He's the author of confusion. What did he do? He's the one who thought to change the calendar. And you think you got it all figured out because you say, well, we know we screwed us over with Sunday worship and we think it's Friday to Saturday. That's the seventh day uh, Sabbath and it's a continuous thing. And so we are smarter than the devil. And boy, we got this figured out. Ellen White was right. Uh, wrong. The whole calendar is a lie, stupid. Midnight's not the change of guard. The months don't start when they say they start. You take your computer try to go back 2,000 years for a Saturday consecutive Sabbath, which is a lie. Even the damn computer, which is the beast system, and the artificial intelligence is the false prophet, it can calculate accurately. There's 11 days missing. Huh. Now what you gonna do with your Saturday Sabbath crap? Saying the devil, the Pope and the devil and all that trying to make Sunday lost, so we got them figured out. We're going to keep Saturday. Anybody doesn't keep Saturday is going to be persecuted. Eh, eh, wrong. Wrong. Anybody who doesn't give their photograph for their driver's license, biometric image, after the Rhodian census in 2020 coming up here real soon, they're arguing about, you know, citizenship. When that 2020, it's a Herodian census just before they kill you. So after they do the 2020 census, it takes another 10 years for it to do it again. Within that 10 year spread, you better be in the woods, baby. 100 years old, 90 year old, 80 year olds, you better be in the woods. Out of her. But I'm 89 years old and I gotta get my social security. I need my medicine. And I have a house here in Virginia, and I don't want to leave it. I'm right here in the city, and I have a good neighbor, and everybody takes me to the store when I want to go. I'm not leaving here. That's what they said to Noah. Forty years, the dude's building this big-ass boat with his family. And they were saying, Dad, I can't work today. I don't feel like it. I'm, I'm, I'm doing some Game of Thrones on my iPod, Daddy. I can't do no nailing no wood and gluing up no wood, Daddy. I can't do it. And, and Mommy said she's got to go to church. And sister, uh, sister said she's, she's got a boyfriend and she, oh, no, she ain't available either because she's got to get, um, her nails done. Uh-uh. For 40 years, the whole family was about my father's business. The bride making herself ready. The bride making herself ready, Sam. When the bride makes herself ready, Sam, does she stop at a quick way? Does she stop at a uh, quick stop? Does she stop at a Apple uh, uh, convenience? Does she stop there? The bride stop there and and, uh, and preach to somebody over here and start a conversation because you think the Holy Spirit told you to get it started, Sam? No. Is that the bride making herself ready? No. Uh-uh. Who are you supposed to be looking for? Laborers. What kind of laborers? Well, there's a big ass construction site going on over here, down here in Carolina. And uh, they, they want about 500 workers. So I'm going to go down there and hang out with some laborers over there. You know, I hear they're getting $30 an hour down there, you know, because it's hazardous, right? But I'll tell you what. The laborers we're looking for are laborers who study the word, not just the King James, but everywhere the spirit of truth leads you, you will find truth that's been hidden by the devil. And man, you've trusted in, you leaned on the arm of flesh, you got the curses big time in your nation and in your world, and everybody's drunk of the American, the U.S. corporation, uh, a cup of fornication, they've all drunk of it, they want to look like you, they want to smell like you, they want to have sex the way you have sex. They want to marry the way you marry. They want to do what you want to do. They want to be just like you. And guess what? Every one of you are responsible because you didn't say, I'm putting my foot down 
I want to help Billy Redneck tell the whole world, put the foot down on this. 856-776-1176. Our weapons are not carnal. We're not fighting flesh and blood. I came for the equipping of the saints. As far as I'm concerned, there ain't any men on the planet who are equipping you properly. Now then, if you as soldiers put on your panty waist underwear and that's all you have on as your armor, you are ill-equipped. You need to have all seven spirits of Yahweh, and that's representing the seven spirits, represents the seven candlesticks. You gotta have the fear of Yahweh to like the other six. And they've never taught you about the fear of the Almighty. You are ill-equipped, you're naked as naked can be. You're Laodicea and lukewarm. You're all gonna die, you're all gonna perish, and America will be desolate. Are you saying in your house, as for, as 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 Yehoshua Joshua did, son of Nun, did you say, as for me and my household, we will keep the commandments of Yahweh and the calendar of Yahweh, according to the sun, the moon, and the stars. And we will ask Yahweh, according to Hosea chapter 2, to take the words of Balaam from our mouth. And we will not call him by the words of Balaam anymore. Are you doing that in your house? Are you a laborer? No ox family. We're laborers for 40 years building a structure. Now then, they were building something made with hands. Christ is building something not made with hands. We have to have spiritual power and you don't have any. The first part of growth is to realize you're bullshipping yourself and that the Bible says at the end of days, you'll say the following phrases. Surely we've inherited lies from our fathers. When you get that through your core, dad, as a soldier, you will then get on your knees and cry out and say, I will read your Old Testament until I learn what sin is. And I will not do your sin except by your grace. And I know you will teach me how to be just like you. And you were the Old Testament made in the flesh. And I appreciate and thank you for taking away the death penalty from the Old Testament law. And the animal sacrifices as well. Because now, I understand the principle of the Old Testament marriage covenant. You made it easier for me to keep that Old Testament marriage covenant. My fathers were signing themselves off into the beast government for years and years, signing their signatures right out of the book of life into the book of corporate death. Corporation means corpse. Every time you sign your name on a contract, you died a little bit more. Unrighteous as hell. Gave your souls away. Now what are you going to do? Now what are you going to do is the question. Well, first of all we have to admit, we look at the law, we find out what sin is, and we don't do it anymore. If you do it through grace, it's between you and your Creator. Now then, you review the law, shows you what sin is, you don't do it anymore, go and sin no more, then what? You become equipped. You know about the mercy. You know about the blood. But you don't know what sin is. Therefore, you're perishing for lack of knowledge because of the law. Over five million laws in America, and you don't want to do 759 Old Testament laws that are so easy a child can do it. He told you to train your children up in the way they should go. He said when they walk by the way, teach them the Torah. And when they get up, teach them the Torah. When they lie down, teach them the Torah. Teach them to fear Yahweh, so when they're old, they'll walk in that way. But some son of a bitches somewhere said, we don't got to do that Old Testament law. Some son of a bitches, some bastard said it. Oh yes, the Bible calls them bastards. Somebody got the bright idea, like some sodomite. Ooh, we can't do that Old Testament law. We're protesting Protestant Lutherans. We, we just can't do that. No way, no man can do that Old Testament law. It's just impossible. I'm fixing to call you a liar, sir. This nation was founded on that Old Testament Torah. Trouble is, the Jews, even the Hasidic Jews, they ain't even doing it no more. Uh, they have a form of godliness. They deny the power thereof and they break the commandments and think it's no big deal. 
The Bible says the Jews have three major transgressions. And Yahweh's coming. And with them, a rod of iron. And for all the wise virgins who took the time to redeem the time and harvested the truth and labored to find the truth, the harvest of truth is plentiful, the labors are few. Pray there be more labors. There's a reward for them. A huge, huge bounty, a basket of blessings for all of them who feared him and thought upon his name and came out of her, my people, be not a partaker of her sins and her plagues. If you want to know some wisdom, I don't care who you are, how much your sins were, I don't care if you're a homosexual, I don't care if you're a transgender, I don't care who you are, you come now. 856-776-1176-856-776-1176. You want to come out of her, my people? Be not a partaker of the sins and the plagues that are coming to America? It's going to be desolate. And they're fooling you right now, man. That's the Wizard of Oz, man. The curtain is there. And they're pulling all the strings. Lying to you. Uh, yeah. uh, you're not smart, so they give you a diploma. Yeah, another damn lie. The richest man on the earth quit school. You don't have any courage? Well, join the damn army. Sign your soul away, son. They don't give you courage. Shoot them. Shoot them. Shoot them. All the children and the mothers and the grandmothers die, and they fall in the ditch, and they fall backwards, and, and they plow over them. You got courage now, sir. Give me a purple heart. Hey, you don't have a heart? You don't have a heart? That's all right. Wizard of Oz, no heart? No courage? No brain? Diploma? Right? No courage? Give you a medal? Right? No heart? We'll give you a time clock. You can punch it out. Nine to five. Yeah. Working nine to five. There it is. You bought the damn lie. Abraham was a king. He wasn't working for somebody else. Abraham wasn't working for somebody else. He didn't go work for somebody else. So he could get an IBM pension or, or a school pension or, you know. No! You're the king, and Christ is the king of all of us kings! What the hell's wrong with you? Alright. Enough. Let's see if we can get a scripture for you real quick. Sorry, Sam, there wasn't enough time for you. No worries. In Yehuda is Yahweh known. His name is great. In America. In Salem, in Salem, and the Jonah eclipse went from Oregon, Salem, Oregon, all the way down Columbia County, South Carolina. It went through six towns or cities called Salem, Sam. And it's coming back in 2024 from New York to Texas. Also was his tabernacle and his dwelling place in the heart, Zion. There break he the arrows of the bow, that's the words, and the shield. He's going to break their words and the, uh, and the sword and the battle. Think about it. You are more glorious and excellent than the mountains of prey. The stout-hearted are spoiled. They have slept their sleep, and none of the men of might have found their hands. Look at that. Look at that. The men of might are supposed to write two copies of the Torah. Every king, Deuteronomy chapter 17, tells you. At thy rebuke, O Yahweh of Jacob, both the chariot and the horse are cast into the into a dead sleep. That's because the electric's going out right here. And verse 6 tells you. The, the tanks, the planes, the, the missiles, the lasers, the satellite, all of it going to sleep. No electric. You even thou art to be feared. And who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? There you go. You're supposed to fear Yahweh. Verse 7. Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. That's Billy Redneck. Classic Redneck Radio. The earth feared and was still. When Yahweh arose to judgment, to decision, to save all the meek teachable of the earth, surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. 
The remainder of wrath shall thou restrain, thou and pay unto Yahweh your mighty one of oaths. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. You fear Yahweh. He shall cut off the spirit of the princes. That's all the all the lawyers, uh, bankers, uh, the politicians, the policemen, the the law enforcement. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. This is Billy Redneck, loving you, America. America is comprised of two words. America means kingdom heaven, and I'm loving you, and nobody else, no one on the planet speaks these words. They are from the throne of Christ. Move! Get out of her now! You're ill-equipped. Hide yourselves from what is coming. 856-776-1176 Call me for the fear of scriptures. Hundreds of them from the King James Bible. Dollar, 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 that's what I need. Hey, hey. Well, I need the dollar, 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 that's what I need. I need a dollar, 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 that's what I need And if I share with you my story, would you share your dollar with me? Bad times are coming and I reap what I done sow <laughs> Well, let me tell you something, all that glitters and gold It's been a long, old trouble, long, old trouble so long And I'm looking for somebody, come and help me carry this load Thank you for listening to Worldwide Christian Radio, WWCR, Nashville, Tennessee, USA.